Hey, my name is Marco. I'm a pro opera singer turned voice actor. Uh, I love video game music. I love talking about video game music. I love talking about voice acting. And today I am thrilled because I have invited special guest Peter Bramhill, the voice of Thancred, to come and watch the Shadowbringers trailer with me. Hey, Peter, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Oh my gosh, thanks for being Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. So you have not seen this, or at least if you have seen it, it's been at least what 2019 oh, yeah it's been, a, it's been a while and i've seen sort of you know snippets of it obviously over the years um but no i haven't watched it in full since it came so perfect great. yeah yeah <laughs> perfect yeah yeah so I, I figured we would watch this together uh just you know the 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 whole experience and then maybe we'll talk about it but also there's a lot of community questions so we'll probably just dive into some of those too and and we'll just get it done brilliant cool let's do it let's have a little right. look awesome have come and gone since that day. How many years have I waited for this moment? For the one that stood alone against the storm. they called the warrior of light returns I will hold the line This time 
town certainly has changed, and not at all for the better. I'm not going anywhere. I promise you, Minfilia. It, it, it's just incredible, isn't it? I mean, just all of it. Man, it's pretty epic, isn't it? That's incredible. <laughs> I maybe want to watch it on a big screen, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, I know. <laughs> I'll tell you what was amazing, though, is uh, I've never heard it through. It's amazing to wear headphones and hear it through I know the soundscape and the music through all that. It's because it's, man, they hit some marks there, don't they? It goes from kind it, of... It, it, truly. It, it, how do you feel, I mean, having seen it? Yeah, um, I know. It's it's a really um, it's a really bold piece of work, isn't it? I absolutely love it, I and mean, it's like watching a a massive movie trailer, but bigger mm -hmm. in scale. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. love that kind of that soundscape. That sort of you know they're so good at it, aren't they? The creators and uh, of of making that sort of ethereal kind of haunting start that always kicks into that kind of rock beat eventually and then just swells into this enormous wall of sound that sort of I mean, i'm sort of always in awe of that kind of musicality and the editing and all that it's just amazing i love it yeah well and so can i mean it's just extraordinary and you know it, it's it's amazing just hearing just especially shadowbringers i think in, in particular as far as gameplay too like shadowbringers really I was shocked actually because you know i've been playing since a realm were born on and off and then i really mm. committed and you know, obviously, you know the story of Shadowbringers. Oh, and also spoilers. Uh, and Kate, we're gonna talk spoilers here, so for and Walker and stuff. So just, just be warned. Um, but there is such a that that flipping of the script, you know, and and going to the first and entering into this, you know, sort of alternate universe that that you'd never seen in any certainly in any game of this size, but and also in general, it really kind of blew my mind. Uh, yeah. What's amazing about Final Fantasy fourteen is and I want to talk about this acting component is that there is, um, I was thinking it in the very beginning, there's almost like a Shakespearean quality to it. I mean, uh, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, it, that's the, it's just a comment. Like there's, there's oh, an yeah. elegant, there's an elegance and like a heightened speech. And I sort of wanted to talk about that before I dive into some of these questions. Like how was it for you, uh, you know, obviously we live in the 2020s. Like, how was it? Did you have to sort of shift like the pitch of your voice or the way that you're talking to be more, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I mean, I've, I've, um, my sort of background is in Shakespeare. So it's funny you bring that up. So I did a, mm. you know, did a lot of classical theater for, for years and sort of will continue to do so. But 
really one of the big draws of, of Shakespeare and very much so with, with the writing of things like Final Fantasy XIV, especially with this, is if the writing's good, sometimes it's better not to heighten. It's sort of finding that truth. It's finding a way, especially with Shakespeare always, is trying to make it accessible, trying to make it just sound natural, even though it's heightened language. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I speak, uh, I'm from the north of England, but for Thancred, he sort of felt, well, when I first sort of got the part and they gave me little breakdowns, they wanted him a bit more RP. Um, and in fact, there was a few, re the reference they used at the time, I think, was Carrie Elwes in A Prince's Bride. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for years and years ago. Not as like a, to do that voice, but it's that sort of quipping, mm -hmm. um, you know, silver-tongued, off-the-cuff sort of bard. And so he, you know, he started sort of quite high. You know, he's much higher in range when he when he first came along, and then, and as we've sort of gone on through him finding, you know, him being more battle scarred and world weary and <laughs> melancholy and brooding, he's sort of <laughs> gone down there to the looks introspectively into the bottom of the glass, and, but can still <laughs> bring out a quip here and there. <laughs> you know, that sort of he's it's that so kind true. of dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's but like you say, it is it's it's Shakespearean both in scope. And in its richness, um, and also in the way it, it um, addresses so many issues which are relevant from the past and for the future, and just the just the wealth of of um, well-rounded characters that they seem to continually be able to throw together, it's it's very much so. It's um, it's a real joy to to be part of. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's astounding, and I mean, gosh, especially near the end of N. Walker, which we'll, we'll probably dive into. But just the, I think it, it's not a single uh, eye was left dry near the the whole experience. You know, it's just like it's just, it's so fascinating too. And I'm sure, uh, you know, I think like being a recurring role in anything is probably is an actor's dream, right? But then yeah, this has yeah. been a ten year journey, hasn't it? From for even yeah. for you. Yeah, pretty much. I think I sort of came in. Yeah, the the big shift with voice acting was post realm reborn i think that was the mm -hmm. big reboot realm reborn wasn't yep. it and, and then they yeah. switched sort of pretty much the entire uh cast for heavensward and onwards so yeah i mean i think it's probably the best part of 10 years it's probably eight years or so um and then it's weird with with recurring characters i mean as you know sort of with experience of voice work yourself is sometimes you might not do that character for a long time and then mm -hmm. suddenly like for instance in things like endwalker when and Shadowbringers and Thancred has suddenly a big chunk, you might just suddenly go in for hours um, and it might be scattered over a few weeks or it might be all intensive in, in a couple of days. And you just sort of have to gear back into that that character. You can, you know, you play little, play little snippets of your characters yeah. gone by and you sort of gear back in. But he's kind of always in there. When it, You know, like you say, it's such um, a privilege to get a recurring role because you kind of grow with it. And and his voice becomes your voice because as I age, he ages, and yeah. and you know as I go as he goes through all his little trials and tribulations and battle grizzly warrior scars, then you sort of you take them on yourself, and it's you know it's a real pleasure to get to get a chance to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so cool. Well, let's drop into some community questions that people had some really sure. great questions. Ethereal Zenith asks, what direction or guidance was were you given on voicing the character and has that changed over the expansions? Thancred is one of the science who feels like they changed the most over the game's expansions. And, mm. uh, and they want to know if that's been directly acknowledged in the voice casting in sort of that direction. Well, it's a good question. Um, because obviously you never know when you when you take a part on, you never know where it's gonna go, whether it's gonna be a, a brief thing, a a long running thing. And at the very beginning, um I was given just uh because I think they, you know, like with any acting role, you you're aware of what's been before. And especially like you said, with classical roles when you know the part might have been played a lot of times by lots of different people. And it's good to have references of that, but you also have to make it your own. And so they they very much gave me quite a brief um, outline of who Thancred was. I mean, it's probably similar to something you'd see if you if you uh, just Googled it, you know, and you've mm. got a little brief thing. But then there's a couple of references, like I said, I think it was Carrie Elwes. And, and, you know, but they said, you know, Silver Tongue Bard, not much more. They give you a brief outline. And then you, we had a little go at it in like a sort of trying to find a voice that wasn't going to, I mean, obviously it's always going to be difficult when the voice actor changes, 
but you don't want it to jar too much. Like it has to be different, but it has to sort of, you know, be realistically the same character. You don't want to lose the thread of that character. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we just sort of dove in. And, um, and then over the years, it changes organically because no one gives you um, an idea of what you should bring. You just very much get into the booth you have a director behind the glass who are supremely talented along with an engineer and you'll sort of unpick the lines between you and then what you also have that is the you know one of the most uh, integral parts of it is your i call them the oracles right and and they're sort of in your headphones and they could be anywhere like tokyo yeah, yeah. Anyway, and um they just give you because sometimes as you know you might just have a few lines that's mm-hmm. in the embedded in the game somewhere and there's nothing for hours either side of it and you need to have all that information which you're not given and so these incredible humans will give you all mm-hmm. the, the required information you need with obviously not taking up all the time you have in the booth so that you can deliver them in the right way but then sometimes you might deliver it differently and and they might you know or you give them a different take if you have time two different wildly different takes or an alt as they call it Mm -hmm. alternative um so that when they get to putting the voices in they might go actually it's quite nice especially with a character like thancred because you know he can be very earnest like you know you know um i i hear i don't know i hear that he is a wonderful warrior uh could be a line like that but thancred might decide it's like i hear He's a wonderful warrior. You might mm. throw it away, give it a bit of irony, and it might land. And so they have those choices. And so you kind of find your way. I'm sort of waffling on the, this a bit because it's a difficult thing to describe in the booth. But you No, know, of course. It's, yeah. it's, and it's also random, right? Because, I mean, after all, like the time is of the essence, but you also need context. So obviously the oracles give you as much totally. context as they can, but then NDAs, so you can't give too much context, right? There's all that, you know, that. To- totally, yeah. And actually there's times when... I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Like we obviously we have yeah lots of NDAs, but then sometimes you'll be sent quite a large script. I suppose it's dependent of, of how much you're woven into all of it. And you're sent quite a large script, but they're very difficult to read off the but it's just everyone's lines like that, because they're not written as, you know, it's not like reading a play as such, because it's I mean, as you know, because you're a player, the mm-hmm. labyrinth style of the game is just vast. And so you can't yeah. possibly know everything that ever happens um but sometimes you're just given your lines and you might yeah, just be given them the night before uh, <laughs> and and you just you know have a read of them think about things but then when you get in there and you're given context there's no point in making choices before you get in there because the context will change it accordingly and then sometimes as you know you don't want to make too many choices before you do it because inevitably yeah. sometimes that first read is the best one but you know if you don't mess it up if you don't stumble over the words or whatever but then sometimes you want some stuttering and you want because people don't talk perfectly mm-hmm. and the best delivery is sometimes that first one that you know that spontaneous delivery you can always <laughs> and then you'll always do an alt most of the time just in case there's technical glitches or whatever you know oh, yeah. um but then sometimes that can be just for fun or just to get a totally different read. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite nice not to go in there too prepared. I mean, you want to be prepared, but not, but not too prepared. I don't want to be in stone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, and that's my favorite part about voice acting. Actually, it's what I love and it's taken a lot of the pressure off because when I was an opera singer, you know, it's the total opposite. You go oh, in as yeah, prepared yeah. as humanly possible. So, yeah it's taken a lot to like sort of shake off that. And, and I mean, that's the beauty of directors too, is that the director is really there as a guide post and like, you know, that to do that, it's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's a, that's a fantastic job. The directors are so good on, on Final mm-hmm. Fantasy 14, the directors I've worked with have been, they're, they're phenomenal because they have to do everyone and mm-hmm. they have to find that freshness. And then sometimes, as you know, if you're in the booth for hours, I mean, you can have a break and whatnot, but you, you can get a bit weary and it's their job to, to spot that and to you know reinvigorate you or to to find you know it's their job to keep an ear on is what you did two hours ago going to match what you're doing yeah three weeks later when you're in the booth again doing the scene that follows that one uh, yep. uh, you know and it's a it's a huge skill um and yeah i really tip my hat to it and it's a lot of fun i mean i like having a real laugh in the booth i mean everyone works in different ways you know um but because of thanquid as a character and i know he's got more 
um, gritty as the years have gone on, but he hasn't lost that sort of roguish charm, that kind of, uh, you know, off the cuff, bit of rapier wit kind of thing. And I find that if I keep that going in the booth when we're off mic, it just helps me out. So we like to have a little giggle with the oracles, with the director, the engineer, and it sort of keeps that bubble going, you know. Yeah. Um, just like I like to stand up, I know, you know, even if it's a long session. Like this feels quite unusual to sort of to sit. <laughs> Cause, too, yeah. Yeah, because he's a character that just I just find it's quite nice just to be mobile with him um, mm -hmm. as much as you can be, obviously on the mic. But yeah. yeah. Well, cool. That, that that's a really good question. Uh, Pitsy Patty yeah. said, "How does it feel? Uh, how do how do you feel about your character's relationships with Minfilia and Reen? Uh, the Thankred dad character development and mm. uh, and your acting was amazing in Shadowbringers. So, you know, oh. did you have any strong feelings about those characters and other wow. sounds? Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. Firstly, for the compliment. That's very kind. Um, yes. I mean, that has been a huge part in." in Thancre's development, the Shadowbringers, that whole, the Minfilia, the Reen storyline was one that, I mean, fit from a personal level, when I, you know, was given those lines and they were sort of drip fed over, over a period of time. You, it was like, a, it's a dream come true stuff, you know, mm -hmm. because you're seeing the development of a character um, mm -hmm. and a real change because obviously, yeah, there's loads of fun in playing the, the womanizing, uh, you yeah, know, bad boy. hard drinking rogue, rogue, uh, lovable rogue. But now he has this uh, a, a double edge because he's he has learned to care for people. Not that he didn't before, but he's had to, and he's had to suffer a loss of Minfilia, someone who I think you know he doesn't like to admit that he's vulnerable, uh, or someone's made him vulnerable, and so. He had that sort of fantastic coldness, didn't he, with Reen, and uh, mm. which is a great fun to play out. I know it's uh, uh, dark matter and all that, but um, uh, but secretly that's what that's the juicy stuff, isn't it? Because then you watch a character wrestling with their emotions and their feelings, and secretly you know that there is um, an altruistic spirit within them, and and ultimately Reen, you know, brought out a side of him that was always there, but internalized. I mean, because also you know he had a rough upbringing himself as a as a street urchin and right. orphan and so uh it's a really lovely thing to to watch that develop and and play it out and so you know hopefully we did um a great job on it um it was lovely to hear reen's lines sometimes this is a big part of voice acting actually is that it's a flip of a coin whether you're first or second in the booth so if it's if you do a lot of like like um Thancred and reen did a lot of toing and froing and watching um, a character development as a as a duologue, if you like, is um, sometimes one of you will record first, and so mm -hmm. when the other one goes in the booth, they can play the the lines for you to react to, and so it can work work both ways. Sometimes it's really nice to be able to react as another actor, but also sometimes it's really nice for you to set the tone uh, of that mm -hmm. scene because obviously you know then it kind of has to morph around that. But I mean, personally, I like a mixture of both. And I think, I mean, I might be making this up, but I feel like when there's a long running storyline like that, they kind of mix it up. Cause I feel like half the time I was instigating and half the time Reen was. And so you get this lovely symbiosis between the two characters. You know? Playing off each other. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> it's fun. I, did they ever, this is separate from the questions, but did they, cause I, I was recently in a, in a book where we actually were all gathered. And so it was like, it was a, we were all in our own home studios, but it was, it was like a, a group project. So we were reading off of each other. Were you able to like ever like hear, no, that doesn't make sense. You can't possibly, but like, were you ever together with other castmates? No, no, never. In fact, um, we sort of, a few of us, uh, a few of us scions did meet, hook up uh, <laughs> for uh, for a bit of a meet, a London uh, meet and met a load of, of um, players at a great event. Um, and uh, it was the first time we'd met. It was the wow. first time we'd met in person. In fact, the only person I'd met was Reen once, um, they actually, just because um, she was leaving the booth, as I, but neither of us knew. Oh, we were. And, you're actually, right. and actually, it was the director who happened to be walking past and just went, Oh, you should say hello because this is Reen. Uh. <laughs> this is Thancred. And you're just like, What a crazy world that, that everything is 
completely audio. But there's something kind of magical about that as well, because we only see, we only hear the character and we only see that character, like the avatar of that character, if there's, mm -hmm. if there's stuff on screen. So there's something very pure about it. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I must say, I'm, I'm a big fan of it, but uh, it is very unusual. Whenever I talk to, to you know, a, a fan of the game or anything, and that comes up, they cannot believe that we weren't together. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the, it's really tight. I, honestly, it's the the relationship between the two characters is is well, and also with Mephilia, of course. But like with Reen and Thank yeah, yeah. there's a real tight bond that you feel, uh, and it I mean, it is astounding. But it also speaks to like how good you know the training, uh, you know, your upbringing as an actor, and and also her upbringing. Yeah, well, you know I what I mean? About like, that, but you're very kind. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you good, know, and good a good writing. director, good writing, yeah. <laughs> good writing, yeah, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, it's it's awesome. Um, Guardian X asks, "What is was the trickiest thing to do when voicing Thancred? He's a really dynamic and evolving character, and I'm guessing that made it a lot harder from other roles, possibly. Also, what was the most fun you had voice acting as Thancred? Mm, okay, so the mo so the most so, so what's difficult and what's fun and yeah, I mean he is. I mean, luckily for me it's all enjoyable because of that. Like, I mean, obviously some of it's more taxing than others. And we sort of, what we touched on before about if it's a particularly long session, like, you know, we're all just human and the voice does get tired. And because he is, he's quite a passionate character, even though he's sort of, you know, can be sort of pragmatic as mm -hmm. well. It, it can wear, it can be wearing on the voice. Um, and you don't want to lose that uh, animation in the voice, you know, as you know, I mean, certainly, with opera training, I mean that's a, that's a whole other different technical yes. bag of spanners which I won't open right now. But I <laughs> take it after that. <laughs> but, but it's just very important to to keep that focus and and just try and keep that you know keep it na as natural as you can, even though some of it, like the question says, is particularly emotive or active. But for me, it's the it's the intimate scenes that that are sort of. Um, they're not the hardest. They're they're just sort of the ones that I. You need the concentration to be at its utmost. I think because it's. I think people don't understand how much physicality you can have around a microphone. And if you've got a very active bit, you can move a fair bit if if you keep. You know, as long as you're keeping it. Uh, otherwise, the engineer is going to be you know tapping on the glass <laughs> or whatever. But, <laughs> As long as you're not bashing your feet and, and you've taken all your change out of your pockets and, and uh, not, nothing's <laughs> whistling and banging, but you get better at that. You get better at putting physicality, learning to put physicality into the voice. I always think um, a good example is getting someone to just, you know, say into their phone, oh, we're nearly at the top of the mountain and here we are at the top of the mountain, we've made it, something like that, and just do it as if you're there. And inevitably, they'll always just say it. And you think, yeah, but if you're climbing a mountain, you've got to put it in there. You've got to, and there's so much you can do and, and listen to how people act. And um, and that's why it's great. I love watching, you know, ba battles, people, you know, it's a good thing to watch like a boxing match or uh, the Olympics or it was on recently that, um, uh, is great because you, it, you'd learn how people are physical with their voices mm, and it's yeah. not necessarily in the words but you can very much add that um and so yeah with Thancred nothing's difficult it's just a joy because we're sort of in it now and it's sort of he feels part of my own fabric but uh I mean that sounds a little bit pretentious but it's kind of I don't know how else <laughs> no, to describe no, no. it I don't know how else to describe <laughs> it um but he's um I just love that you know the that we i'm just lucky enough to have a character that does have those kind of levels that you do get to play very very intimate kind of you know almost asmr style scenes <laughs> um on your you know potential deathbed or you know being very sentimental and, and exposing with with reen and stuff introspective and you also get these huge battles because he's a great warrior he's a gladiator um but then a good director, or all the directors, no one would ever do this, is you need to temper that. Like, you'll never do your war cries and all that at the beginning of a session because it'll just shred your voice, you know, um, which can be good for a minute for Thancred because it gives you that kind of, you know. <laughs> and then you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, it's all right if I was just doing a trailer for, like, you know, in a, in a world of war. <laughs> but, but you can't sustain it. And so, yeah, it's nice to get um, the more natural scenes out the way first 
before your, your huge battle scenes, but it's not always possible. Sometimes things are in a different order and you just have to go with it and just try and rest the voice when you can. Lots of honey. I like to take an apple in. I've spoken about this before, but you know, that's a great tip for any budding voice artist, although I haven't got one with me now. I call myself a professional. If you, uh, <laughs> if you feel like you're getting that sort of dry mouth, which you get, especially in a sound booth, if you're in there for a few hours, you should pierce an apple with your teeth. Don't take a massive bite of it. I did that when I first started. That's that's not what to do because then you've got a mouthful of apple. Just but, suck, but, just suck the citrus, and it and it clears the palate and it gives you crystal clear. Granny Smith, again. right? It's got to be Granny Smith. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to it's got to be something crunchy. Yeah. This is a nice question. Sylvan Barrow asks. You probably answered this multiple times before, but how has the story and maybe interactions with fans up to current time impacted him and his fellow cast? I've seen a fellow a few I've seen a few fellow actors doing some stuff on Cameo, and they seem to be having a blast. Yeah, well, yeah, the Cameo thing. I, I yes, I've started doing that um, relatively recently, but that really blew up very quickly, uh, and it's been amazing. I've absolutely loved it. I have to say, it's been. Uh, a real revelation. I mean, I know that I've, I've sort of um, had uh, a few meetings with with fans of the game in the past, but um, a, a big event, say, uh, and it's also such a incredibly warm and, um, as we said before, such an inclusive, warm, positive community that you know any requests you get on on things like cameo are just fantastic to do because. Honestly, the realm is your oyster. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> I, I could not have second guessed what people have asked me uh, to do on there. And so it's been fan it's been so much fun. You know, everything from, you know, jokes, puns, you know, uh, <laughs> characters who are in love with Thancred, you know, uh, heart heartfelt scenes I've acted out and <laughs> things. <laughs> and it's amazing. And people write their own thing, you know, because the game's big for that, isn't it? That oh, yeah. Can, yeah. Do a lot of writing. So you get these incredible, the talented writers sending you this amazing stuff for you to read out in, in character and, and you can embellish it and add to it what you want. And I just love how personal it is to each each person who can request. And the same as when you meet um, fans the same, you know, they have such a personal experience with the game um, that you couldn't second guess. Like you very rarely... I mean, there's a few things you get asked uh, that are the same, but very rarely are you asked the same question because people come at it from a totally different perspective, it seems, uh, yeah. which is testament to the game. I mean, that's the richness of the game, isn't it? It's huge. And I mean, you know, on a personal note, I mean, like Endwalker, the reason it was a really cathartic experience because my dad died in January and this oh, whole... Oh, man, I'm sorry. That's all right. But like, you know, the experience of like having these characters kind of come along and and just like not only watching the character development but also just the music and the whole experience was a really cathartic experience for me personally that mm. i didn't necessarily expect that like people were like that's oh, really sad and i'm like okay but then it with that extra layer of the personal thing like it really elevated the whole experience even for me so yeah absolutely that's it's amazing it's it's amazing yeah. what they've been able to do and what it really done. is yeah and it's been an eye-opener for me because i think you know People don't realise sometimes, expect, and it was the same with the um, the other scions that I met in there <laughs> um, uh, earlier in the year. Is you know we we watch you know the cutscenes things like that, but I, I'm not personally a player as yet because I'm kind of, kind of thinking I might save it for the kids. You know, I think it'd be a quite a fun thing for them to experience, oh. and also I find it quite strange playing things that I'm voicing as well. Uh, inevitably but i mean that's not a huge part of it but i um i just found that uh, on the personal thing especially sort of through endwalker like you were saying and the fact that people can create their own characters so they sort of have ownership of it from the very start you know so mm -hmm. you're true you really are experiencing it on your terms this kind of um kaleidoscopic uh labyrinth of a of a world um and it sort of creates these relationships which seem real and seem and they can be comforting they can be galvanizing and especially you know the last uh, you know everyone i spoke to earlier in the year you know going through what we all went through in the last couple of years it's been a real constant um and in fact when we went in we did a few recordings during that sort of time the covid time one i we had to do at home set up a home thing mm -hmm. and but when we were back in the studio it was totally different. You were totally alone. You were totally, there's no director. The directors, everything's just in 
earpieces for a while, but it really felt like, you know, we were doing something important because it's like uh, people really wanted it. People were needing it right then. And it was like, where's the next bit? Where's the next bit? Where's the next bit? Uh, and so for the first time, it sort of, uh, even though in, in the scheme of things, it was unimportant, it felt like it was doing some good, you know. I think it's done a lot of good for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, me too, yeah. You know, it, it, it's like as an actor, you're like, well, you know, what am I, how meaningful is what I'm doing? But I think in this case, it, I think it, it's really been supremely yeah. important for a lot of I people. Agree. I agree. And I think, you know, if I learned anything over those couple of years, it was, it was that thing, wasn't it, where people started saying, I wonder what this time would have been like for everyone if there were no games, if there were no television, if there were no uh, films yeah. for yeah. you to do at home. I wonder what that would be like, you know, because um, we all love a novel, but the, the sort of escapism of what, what you can do with these vast um, worlds that are created is, and, and the connections that you can uh, sort of live and breathe. I mean, I love some of these requests that I'm getting recently are, you know, it feels so real. It's really visceral. And, and I love that. It feels like you're, it's like old, old fashioned improv in the acting world. It, sort of <laughs> yeah. feels, it feels like a, a real thing. And I love that. I think it's great. Mm. Noel asks, are you enjoying yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for asking. No, that's, that's kind. And, and yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a real privilege. I mean, of course, I mean, it all, all um, actors know it's a privilege to work full stop. But this in particular, to be part of, um, to be a very small part of something so huge that touches so many people's lives. And also, you know, as we said before, and I keep sort of banging on about it, I've just never come across anyone in the community that has anything negative to say. You know, it's just all such a, a, a sort of life affirming, boosting <laughs> and energy to it all um that how could we not enjoy it you know and i know a few of our eyes were, were really opened wide me and a couple of the other voice actors when we you know came into contact with with some uh, of the fans who'd come to to uh talk to us and we just you just don't realize how the hinterland of this game just goes on and on it's like a, it's huge um and it's really you know just makes you want to do the best you can when you get in the booth it's but as you know, sometimes you don't have much time. And and so, but you have enough, you know. I mean, sometimes it can be a curse to have too much time. That was an old adage in the theatre that, you know, too much rehearsal time and the play will sort of live and breathe and you're like, it'll be at its best. And then you'll spend another three weeks just making it rubbish again <laughs> before you get in front of an audience, you know. <laughs> too much time to think. Sometimes it can be a curse. Soon, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you sort of got to trust the instincts of it and uh, have fantastic time, obviously. And, and I hope it continues as, as long as it can, yeah. It's just a privilege to, whenever I get another bit, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Fancred's still in the game. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Um, and so, no, it's a real, it's a real honor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Angel asks, how did you feel about the major change from Eorzea to the first? Did you at the time have a preference for which area you liked most? I feel Shadowbringers was one of the X packs that really provided Thancred with development. Do you wish the relationship between Menphilia and Thancred should have been explored more, or do you think Menphilia's exit was the best for Thancred himself, despite mm. obviously hurting with her gone? um yes yeah so the whole relationship with the first because i don't know mm. obviously like were you aware of that change that did you feel like sort of a, a character shift even you know I mean, going uh, to the first yeah i mean there's certainly i mean the going to the first thing obviously that uh, the character shift kind of came from the relationships with the characters right. more than it's a bit like you know if you picked picked you up and and chucked you into another country or realm you're still you you just have yeah. to experience and deal with that and so there's always that development but that's more sort of um instantaneous so you don't necessarily change through that that's just sort of a life experience but that whole minfilia loss i mean i think they said didn't they just then um did they explore it enough? And I think they did because sometimes, you know, that could be a whole spin off of its own, couldn't it? That whole Thank Ridman Philly thing. But sometimes it's nice to let the players and the people experience it and come up with their own ideas of what, what is unsaid or what was unexplored as well. Like, how did it play out? Who knows? And so there's something kind of um, mysterious about that, you know, and, uh, and it gives them. A kind of enigma, it's enigmatic, you know. Um, because I, 
I thought they did it. I thought they handled all that brilliantly, the whole Minfilia thing. Because it sort of, it bled into the, you know, the, the Reen storyline so well. It's like, it's the ultimate dichotomy, isn't it? It's, it, you know, someone you love is going to be extinguished, if you like, if you, if you um, do what they've asked and mm-hmm. nurture this new being to its full, to their full potential. So what do you do? It's like, talk about a rock and a hard place. And so he, you know, like any good grizzled warrior, gets gets the hump and uh, <laughs> is a bit cold with Reen at first, but obviously comes from a place of love and then eventually morphs. I mean, there's a really lovely moment, isn't there, where, you know, post, you know, when he sort of tells Reen how proud, well, he talks about how proud he is of her and, and has, you know, sending her off to, on her way. And, and he names her, he, like, he, you know, the Reen, the whole Reen thing. I think mm-hmm. Reen does mean blessing, doesn't it? I, I think, I don't know if you, I think Reen, I might be going out on a limb here, but I'm sure somewhere in the, in the mists of time in the past, I think Reen might mean blessing. Well, and if it doesn't, I've sort of taken that on board because it's quite nice, isn't it? It's like Thankwood's yeah. giving her his yeah. blessing and yeah. and that name and it's the ultimate acceptance and that sort of that parenting mode that he finds within himself, which probably surprises even himself, is that sort of ultimately a lot of what he does, Thankwood, comes from an altruistic state. You know, he wants mm-hmm. to help people. He wants to fight for the good and he also wants to nurture and maybe give people the leg up that he got when he was you know uh struggling as a as a young here <laughs> you know <laughs> well there's that beautiful scene too where uh, i don't remember all the details it was a while ago but when i think it's heidelin or menphilia oh gosh uh they you know they heidelin possesses reading the body and then he's mm. there and like he has this moment where he sees minfilia for the last time or he sees or i forget the exact context but there is that it's a really touching moment where essentially he does sort of say farewell to minfilia in, yeah. in a way like a final goodbye yes i do i remember i remember that same as you it's sort of you know in my head they sort of it all morphs into one one story but i do remember he, it was a cathartic cathartic moment like they did yeah. get like to answer the question um, that was given, it's like I do think they explored it enough because it, even though yes, they could have expanded and expanded that that farewell, that you know that disintegration of, of uh, that relationship, it, it did have a catharsis. He did get to say his final goodbye, as heartfelt as it maybe was, and as hurt, hurt and deeply scarred as it may have made him. But I think you know that old adage of it, the scars make you stronger and, and the bones heal stronger. And I think it sort of right. brought out a side of a Thancred that made him all the richer to, as a character uh, and to play, you know. I, yeah, I think so. I think so. Kimmy wants to know, what was the music that you grew up listening to and what do you listen to to this day? <laughs> oh, wow. That's a whole other that's a whole other uh, podcast, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's one of those... Um, thank you for asking that question, but it's one of those questions that I never feel equipped to answer. You know that... <laughs> Like, what's your favourite film on the spot? And, mm. um, but saying that, the quick answer to that is a very eclectic music taste. Uh, because I don't know about you, but, you know, it just depends what mood you're in as you wake mm-hmm. up. But I, I love, I mean, for me, the birth of these sort of streaming things, and especially having young kids now, is as much as you lose some of the tactility of, of record collecting and, and uh, going to record shops, which I also used to love, um, is that is that what's available at your fingertips to to just Everything. curate curate your own mood at any time? And I will listen to anything. I will listen to, and I play instrument. You know, I love playing. It's a real relaxing thing. Yeah, of guitar, mine. Yeah. My guitar, but there's there's a piano. I don't know if you can see which. Oh, that's the piano right there. Yeah, me yeah, and the yeah. kids sticker bombed it in. Uh, that's cute. <laughs> in, oh, that's in, uh, nice. Bit of a bit of a lockdown frenzy day, <laughs> and um, but I love that. So you know, sometimes. Uh, I'm sure because you, you're accomplished singing it yourself. And I'm, um, but if you play instruments, that can dictate very much what you listen to because you want to be able to play what something. Yeah, so I'll yeah, do yeah. anything from, you know, indie rock, hard rock, alternative rock, jazz, classical. Uh, I, you know, I, I love it all. I just love. I, I I often soundtrack my own life. Like I'm very rarely mm-hmm. out and about without headphones on. I think it's a brilliant. Way yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, slipping through 
through the ether of life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But yeah, sorry not to have a more more uh, succinct answer to that, but it's a tricky question. Tricky question. Yeah. A good question. Yeah, very good. <laughs> a good tricky good. question. A good, tricky question. It's it's um but listen, listening to that, just listening to that uh, music in the Shadowbringers trailer, that's that's awesome. Like that sort of I love that sort of wall of sound, that soundscape stuff. Uh-huh. And also it, you know, it has that real boundary between having vocals, then not having vocals for a long time, right. and almost going classical and then a bit of yeah. rock, and then some whacking down some heavy guitar in the in the middle there. And there's some great lyrics. I I got a lyric. One of the things I was asked to do on a cameo thing was in the voice of Thancred to read out the lyrics of the some of the songs from you know uh, previous yeah, yeah. Uh, e- expansions and one was that because i because sometimes you know you're lost in the music you don't always hear all the lyrics and there was yeah, some yeah. Fun, and they're and they're brilliant mm-hmm. like i got one there was one here i've got which is great which was which was in that trailer is the road we walk is lost in the flood here proud angels bathe in their wages of blood at this the world's end do we cast off tomorrow I mean, it's good stuff, isn't it? It's like, yeah, <laughs> heavy as hell. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's a little Shakespearean nod, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and that's actually to to not pivot too hard to on another tangent. But one of the things that I love about the music, and I have a whole video all about soaking and light motifs and all that. But like, you know, I think the the juxtaposition between classical and if you know, a realm are born, heaven's word. Um, those expansions were really sort of classically based very you know mm. stormblood as well was very it had a different sound quality of course but it was very much like full orchestra and stuff and then here it's interesting because you know that wall of sound all those men singing you know that very easily could be uh related to the plot with uh you know the the final days and with with Amarat and all that you know it could be the the ancients and and then you've got this sort of rock quality which could represent the first so it's, it's interesting how the music you know all these little like things that we can pick apart from from the uh the music itself is fascinating and oh and it's, man yeah and it's a massive part of of um of the world i mean it's you know like we're all just tiny parts like the voices the, right. the, the animations the creators the directors the musicians the lyricists the you know it's all these tiny elements that they're so intricately woven together and yeah. and um you know you don't know that when you're doing it you don't you know we're, we're not given the final picture uh and that's another thing is like a lot of the time you you don't even have the picture like you, you are just sort of voicing into the in in a booth into the void if you like but you're you know that's why the director's job and and the oracles and yourself is you know it's important that you sort of visualize and create this world because you know, having seen previous ones like this, is the soundscape also is going to be an enormously emotive part of it, and it will help mm-hmm. you along. It's, it's yeah. so intricate. I mean, yeah, I'm, I think they've done a fantastic job with the music. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, and it's a huge it. part of it, isn't it? I mean, it's a huge part of um, like talking to some of the fans of the show. You know, you, you know, the, you you buy the music and just you can listen to it. It's like a real. It is like a soundtrack to your life stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's going to alter your mood if you go and buy a pint of milk from the shop with that on. You're going <laughs> to ask yeah. in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chuki asks, "What direction do you think Thankard as a character will go in the future?" He's had three major versions of himself already. You think there will be another? I know that this is a <laughs> question <laughs> that you probably can't answer. I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't really answer that. I mean, you know, on a personal level, which is nothing to do with what what uh may or may not be I, i'd love banquet to continue obviously because uh selfishly i want to keep um <laughs> you have a job keep, do, keep doing it yeah but also he's fun to do it's like um because sometimes a, a job's a job and and you know yeah. it buys your bread and all that but sometimes uh jobs like this that come along you you, you know you really feel invested you feel like there's a little bit of you in that character because you've been doing it so long and so you want to um see where he's going to go next i mean with you know with the greatest respect i sort of say this from because uh, people can say it as a, as a dirty word which i don't agree with but it's a bit like a sort of elaborate labyrinth um uh, uh long-running soap isn't it like it, you want mm-hmm. those characters to unravel like you want that um 
crazy Christmas special moment where you unravel and then a piece back together and then you're back again and then, you know, you might die and then, oh, you're not dead. And then, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you want that because it, it's the tapestry and, and richness of the character that then you can, that then will, uh, you know, feed into the, the next, uh, the future of them. But who knows? As you know, my I can say nothing about that. Yeah. Apart from obviously Thancred's Christmas album. Will be yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler! Yeah, you heard gonna, it here first. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a soft opening first. Uh, yeah, just see how see how it goes down. But yeah, there you go. See you now. <laughs> <laughs> exclusive, exclusive. Did you? This is a good question. Uh, did you? Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, especially as of late, is notorious for making people cry. Did you or other of your voice actor colleagues cry while recording? And what is your favorite line and Thancred related meme? <laughs> that's a funny question yeah um i didn't cry but un unless i was sort of you know trying to get into a, a, a sort of a emotional state but not, not, not tears crying or um because we don't experience it in the same way as as the players i mean it's made quite rightly it's not made for us to enjoy ourselves even though we do enjoy ourselves in the booth <laughs> it's made for you guys to to enjoy the experience of it and so obviously if you're caught up in it and and you know hours of, of that sort of gameplay and, and living in that world then obviously as you invest in those characters and and you know uh, become sympathetic with them then yeah it will it will move you hopefully that's the goal isn't it that's the mm -hmm. that's the holy grail um but for us no i mean we're sort of i well me personally you're sort of concentrating on that specific moment you're trying to be in that specific moment on that line and hopefully delivering it yeah. with with what it with what you know that they're after uh, yeah yeah of course <laughs> and uh, sometimes it's easier than others mm -hmm. um but what is funny on the tail end of that question is that yes i wasn't aware of this whole kind of meme world around the final fantasy which is obviously massive and yeah what's hilarious is some of them appear from the most innocuous places don't they so like i like this is thankless you know <laughs> this i mean who knew i mean that's just me <laughs> that, would, that would have been a, a second of, of you know sound booth time of this is thankless and suddenly <laughs> it's it, uh it, it just sort of you know you capture some it, some strangeness because it gets repeated a lot i know yeah. and also um there was one i do remember because i remember going in because we changed it and actually i remember having a conversation with the uh, the oracles at the time they're saying oh because it's become a bit of a meme but sometimes it's a fine line isn't it of, is it a good thing or a bad thing or is it jarring to the game or not and that one was my turn do you remember that <laughs> it's like because obviously and that's a brilliant example of how we're not in the same booth or at the same time like that's just the a few of the scions being told to just give a little line about we're about to engage in battle but but i you can't hear what the other ones have done and so mine was just really big and aggressive. <laughs> and the others were like, <laughs> but it became noticeable. But then I think it's like all publicity is good publicity, isn't it? I think that's, yeah. all, I think that's brilliant fun that people have picked up on it. And the, I think it's such a rich world now where you can create memes because I love them. And I think it's very much in the spirit of the game. And it's certainly in the spirit of, of a character Thank like you. Thancred. Because yeah, yeah. it's great that they sort of pick up, you know, because you, you can imagine him going, you know, Huffing about what is what's going on? Why are they? Why? <laughs> why? Why are they saying my turn? What is wrong with my turn? What is it? I'm really... <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love that. But so those two are the two that I've become very aware of. But also, I mean, I don't go um, try not to. You don't want to Google your characters or, or yourself for that matter. Don't do that uh, mm -hmm. too much. But if people send you stuff, you know, you hope that they're sort of curating it for you so that it's enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've been sent some amazing stuff. Like people have made entire sort of character trailers of Thancred. You know, mm. uh, I don't. And saying before I forget, yeah, the line. There's a really great line I always think of um, that he says. I think it is in Shadowbringers, or maybe it's not. Um, where he says, you know, we we must press on. For those we have lost and for those we may yet save or, or, or words to that effect i think yeah which i yeah. think is a great sentiment for our times yeah yeah um so yes sorry that's a waffly answer but there you go no no it's, it's all yours 
<laughs> it was a perfect answer. <laughs> okay, and then I guess the last question is, uh, can can you ask him kindly to say, this is Thancred, please? Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. This is Thancred. This is Thancred. Hmm. I always, here's a little nugget for you. To get into the voice of Thancred, sometimes I use the, I don't know why, just randomly say, I was an orphan. This is Thancred. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> don't know why it was a line he once had i was an orphan uh, yeah and for some reason that's my little it. your placement yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know why it just that's how it's landed over the years there's been others but that one has seemed to have stuck for his more sort of grizzled battle weary tone this is thangrid i'm an orphan i was an orphan not anymore <laughs> but, but now as the years go by because so weird doing it with my own headphones yeah. i'm sure <laughs> Well, you got you got it. Everyone, you got your 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 line. Uh, well, this has gone on for an hour. Uh, I hope that everyone watches this in its okay. entirety because there were a lot of nuggets here. And uh, no threading. It's okay if you skip. Uh, <laughs> and Peter, thank you very much for taking the time out of your. Oh, day Marco, it's been a pleasure, man. You you have a real gift for uh, for interviewing. A very laid back tone, and it's very easy to chat to. So thank you. Oh, uh, thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate that. And You're uh, welcome. Yeah, so everybody, uh, thanks so much. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. And uh, yeah, talk to you later. Bye. Uh, thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <clears throat>